the Penn State Nittany Lions, James Franklin last year. Another disappointing year. And it maybe had more to do with the quarterback position and the fact that there was nobody behind Sean Clifford. I mean, that was what lost them basically two games at least and, and maybe more down the stretch. Uh, this team was pretty good last year at the lines of scrimmage, et cetera. Uh, offense was, I mean, just putrid numbers. I mean, just awful. And a lot of that was skewed by what happened when Sean Clifford went out, right? Uh, they looked pretty good early in the season. Not the not the full offense, just the team overall was able to win close games early. And, and then after that, I mean, it just all, the Iowa game was a disaster. They should have won that game multiple times over. But regardless, uh, let's dive into the numbers here. Post game win expectancy last year was actually seven and five in the regular season, which is exactly what they were: seven point oh four and four point nine six. Uh, their projected record this year is eight and four, as far as SP plus is concerned. Bill Conley's numbers over there. Roster strength, though, I mean they're number twenty one in the country. This is a pretty strong roster when you actually look at the guys that they have in. Um, Everything looked good last year, including like PPA margin, net points per drive, etc., except for when it comes to offensive efficiency. They were just brutally bad. Mike Yersich, the offense coordinator, he is there for uh, the second straight year, and it is the first time in three seasons that they've had a returning offensive coordinator. Sean Clifford's still the guy at quarterback. Everybody's talking about Drew Allar. Um, it, it's not Allar's time right now. I, I think incredibly highly of Sean Clifford. I don't know why. I don't think it's bias because I'm I'm not a Penn State fan. I just I think Sean Clifford is going to have a really big year. So but we'll we'll get there eventually. Uh the running back Nick Singleton, five star absolute stud. He's gonna take over at running back. Should improve their rushing numbers. They were number one twenty in rushing PPA last year. Had zero running game to speak of. So Singleton is going to be big for them. Offensive line underperformed last year. I, I think that's the easiest way to say it. You got two starters back. They look strong via like recruiting rankings and whatnot. But uh, but I do want to see what they end up coming into this year. Wide receivers, Washington, uh, the Western Kentucky transfer, Tinsley. Those guys are studs. I, I think you're going to be able to get a lot going in the passing game this year that you, for whatever reason, were not able to get going the last couple of years so long as Clifford stays healthy, even if he doesn't. You know, you got Drew Allar coming in. I mean, you, you you got options. You got options this year. At number 109 in rushing success rate last year, number 89 in passing success rate, like those numbers, I just don't believe that they are going to get worse than that. So I expect a big bounce this year uh, to actually being a respectable offense. That's what I think. Now over to the defense. New D.C. is Manny Diaz. He's replacing Brent Pry, who, of course, has been with Franklin forever, but he went and took over the Virginia Tech job. Defensive line looks strong. Uh, they had some injuries that, that really hurt them last year. Uh, the Maryland transfer coming in, the defensive end, Robinson, uh, could be a key piece here. Uh, you got seven guys in the secondary that had 200-plus snaps last year. Uh, you forced third downs at a huge rate, number 13 in FBS in that. And while they allowed teams plenty of scoring opportunities, they, they were number 63 in that, they were number four in points per scoring opportunity. A scoring opportunity, by the way, is a dry, an opponent drive that gets a first down inside your 40-yard line. That's a scoring opportunity. So, number four in points per scoring opportunity. I think it was like six interceptions and three fumbles recovered inside their own 40. So, you might want to, you, you could call that luck, or you could just call that like being incredibly opportunistic and, and aggressive on defense. So, uh, this team is projected uh, to be a favorite in nine games. You got six toss-ups, though. That's uh, The toss-ups are games that are projected to be within one score. Looking at the keys to the season, like it feels like 2023 is going to be the year, but there's a lot of talent here for them to, to get to double-digit wins. Uh, can Sean Clifford take like a burrow picket kind of leap into his, uh, his extra year here? Uh, this is the first time he's had an OC for two straight seasons, and there's a bunch of skill talent, so I don't see why not. Like I, I, I saw some... Decent decision making from him. I saw like a pretty good arm early. Yeah, you know, we'll we'll see. Uh, as far as the line of scrimmage, are your offensive line and defensive line strong? Or are they not? I mean, you got tons of recruiting talent, but they haven't exactly impressed week after week. Like they have shined in moments, but yeah, 
you know, the win total here is eight and a half. It's juiced to the under at minus 135. Uh, if you want to bet the over, it's plus 105. And I think that's the direction that I'm going to lean here because I've got this team going 10 and 2. Like, I think this is going to be a really big year. I've got a loss to Ohio State. I've got a loss at the end of the year to Michigan State. Uh, I I think this team can beat everybody on their schedule. Like, that, that big swing game in week one at Purdue is going to be huge. I don't expect really anything out of Auburn this year. So, even though Penn State is going on the road, I still think Penn State is the significantly more talented football team there. I mean, you got Central Michigan, Northwestern, like, I think they can win at Michigan coming off a of bye week. Minnesota the next week, I, I do expect a loss to Ohio State. Uh, but maybe this team goes like 9-3, and three, you know, and, and would that be so bad? I don't think so. I think 9-3 and three is a massive improvement from 7-5. and five. Get back to within shouting distance of the conference championship game. I think that's the key for this season. So I've got them going 10-2. Wouldn't shock me if they go 9-3. and three. Uh you know, eight and four even really wouldn't be awful, but I don't think they want eight and four. Like it just, I, I don't think in state college that that's what they want. So I'm looking at nine and three or 10 and two. And when I did my, like when I filled out my schedule, I've got them at 10 and two. And so I expect some pretty big things from the Nittany Lions this year. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.